Episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, again to another episode of our show. Today, bringing you another really fascinating guest involved in creating a better tomorrow for literally billions of people out there. Uh, today, we have the honor of being joined by Gladys Morales, who is Senior Officer and Global Head of Innovation uh, at the International Fund for Agricultural development, uh, also known as EFAD, where she leads the design and implementation of innovation initiatives and partnerships, ultimately aimed at supporting testing, learning, and scaling up the various innovative solutions that impact poor rural people directly. Uh, she's also currently the, the regional ambassador in Italy of the Global Blockchain Business Council. Uh, prior to joining EFAD, Ms. Morales uh, led the digital transformation of a range of uh, multilateral development banks, United Nations agencies, projects in Latin America, Asia, and Europe, worked for the International Poverty Reduction Center in China. Uh, they're leading the uh, design of digital platforms and, and established various partnerships and knowledge networks uh, for the, the Global Poverty Reduction Inclusive Growth Portal. Uh, she's also very familiar with the uh, the startup ecosystem and has been in part in management teams for digital advertising startups in Indonesia, founded her own startup in Italy. Uh, she's a graduate uh, from the Executive Program on Digital Business Leadership at Columbia Business School, also has a master's in development uh, economics and international cooperation food security and rural development for university of rome uh certificates on leadership and innovation from mit uh, also has a certificates from mit uh in artificial intelligence and leadership and innovation and uh just uh, again when we'll get more into it but efad is this really unique international financial institute it's specialized uh un agency based in rome uh which is where miss morales is uh and is the un food and agricultural hub since 1978 has provided somewhere around $23 billion in grants and low-interest loans, investing in rural people uh, to empower them uh, and food security. Uh, a lot of great topics to get into. Really excited about this episode. Um, Ms. Gladys Morales, thank you so much for taking the time to come on our show today. Ira, thank you so much. And thank you so much also for the introduction and uh, for sparing me the time to um, also introduce EFAT. Now, I really, really appreciate it uh, that you're here. Uh, a lot of themes that we don't normally get into on the show, but um, would love to start off uh, as we typically do by by handing you uh, the floor for a little bit, just to talk a little bit more about your background, because clearly um, you started off in two really unique fronts. Uh, one, uh, interest in poverty alleviation, uh, especially focus on the global South. Uh, at the same time, very interested in innovation and, and digital transformation. Talk a little bit about yourself for a bit and, and how sort of you got started down both these really unique tributaries. Thank you so much, Ida. So from a really young age, I've been interested in, uh, um, in development, uh, in particular in sustainable development. And um, um, I started me, my career actually in the private sector, but uh, moved quickly from the private sector to to uh, supporting some development projects in uh, Latin America, specifically in, in rural and microfinance. Uh, from rural and microfinance, then I started getting involved more and more in uh, project uh, management and uh, evaluating the impact of uh, development interventions in uh, the global south. So um, I, I've been from the beginning very, very much interested in uh, the work of the international organizations, but then I became increasingly interested in the work of international financial institutions. So I, as, as I said, I worked in, uh, as you said at the introduction, sorry, um, I, I worked in, uh, several in several continents, but also 
very much engaged with the work of the international financial institutions. In particular, what fascinates me about IFAD is this intersection in the identity of IFAD as both a UN specialized agency with a laser focus on improving the lives of smallholders with a particular interest also in improving the lives of women, youth uh, and children, and also as an international financial institution that is credit rated and that has access to capital markets. So it's a really, really unique organization, also relatively small uh, uh, compared to the other UN agencies and compared to the other I IFIs, but uh, we're not the ones to say it. Uh, there are other organizations that evaluate the work of FIFA. It's also one of the most impactful organizations and one of the organizations that also delivers the most with uh, high levels of business efficiency. So uh, really proud to, to be part of this incredible and, and wonderful organization. Excellent. And and talk a little bit more about because you know clear you know you mentioned it's it's smaller but clearly at you know around twenty three billion dollars in grants I mean obviously you're executing on on this mission the organization has been around you know since sort of the, the late nineteen seventies and um, you know we profiled in the past guests from um, uh, the food and agriculture organization as well as the World Food Program different purviews uh than what you're doing yours is much more focused on you know looking at this uh base and the, the number is amazing 3.4 billion people that live in rural areas and work on small farms of the sort of you know seven some odd billion that we have on this planet nowadays take us back a little bit to the history of the organization and a little bit of how the model sort of works just the, sort of the financing component of this so people can understand a little bit what you do compared to uh some of these other organizations that we've been profiling yeah yeah that's actually a, a really good point uh, sometimes when you say that uh, if it is both a un agency and an international financial institution is difficult for people to grasp what that means so uh Yes. So in fact, we are an international financial institution, so we provide financing. That's a key component of uh, all the operations that we have. And, and we provide that financing through uh, uh, our program of loans and grants mainly. But uh, more recently, through the Innovation Unit, we provide grants also to startups, so to the private sector, uh, to make sure that we're supporting and financing innovations that can have and can deliver a transformational change and uh, and results and impact for our target groups and for our project participants. So in uh, going back to, to the origins of IFAD, but also very much to, to uh, IFAD's unique value proposition is not only this laser focus on smallholders and on rural development, but very much on IFA's approach to development, which is a really community-based approach and a very participatory-based approach. So, you know, now it's very common to talk about user centricity and you hear about, you know, design thinking and systems thinking and making sure that you're working with and for your end user or your users in general. If it has been working with communities and ensuring that you have uh, you hear their voice and that they're part of the design of projects, the design of programs, and that there is ownership since the beginning. So this is uh, this is something that is not new. It's not new to IFAT. In fact, IFAT has such depth of knowledge of uh, what the needs of these uh, of these groups are and uh, what the communities uh, the their needs and uh, uh, the specialization of FIFA in building these dialogues in creating this uh, participatory approach but also in uh, ensuring that there is ownership if it has been doing that for many 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 years uh, the focus on resilience on building resilience and and the focus on climate adaptation the the language is of course uh, new language new new narrative but the work has been that if it has been doing in these areas is uh you know it's uh it's been operating for a really really long time so in terms of um in terms of differentiating ourselves is um as you said, we are a financing organization, but we are we also collaborate as, as a UN agency. We collaborate a lot with FAO 
and with the World Food Program in many of the initiatives that we have from innovation, but not only on innovation, um, also on ICT4D, but also on, on a lot of our climate grants and climate programs. We, we collaborate with both organizations. The most recent one is uh, one of our programs with a with um, Jeff, uh, the, the facility of the World Bank for, for the Environment. And that's a program now that we are designing in 32 different countries. And through initiatives like this, not only these, many other initiatives, we collaborate with, uh, with both uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization and with the World Food Program. And you know when one goes to uh, sort of the innovation page of IFAD's website, uh, you know it says here IFAD defines innovation as new process, product, or approach that adds value and delivers sustainable, equitable, and inclusive or new contextual solutions to rural development challenges. Uh, and you list these challenges as you were just talking, climate change, environmental degradation, migration, disease. Uh, and then I really enjoy sort of, you know, there's a tagline there. It says, innovation is not just a buzzword for us. It's a fast track to our world without poverty and hunger. Um, talk in general, and we'll be getting into a lot of the technologies, the, the Web3 and the AI in a little bit. Talk a little bit about innovation at EFAD. And as you were saying, you know, you uh, you finance not just startups and entrepreneurs, but also a lot of entrepreneurship. So there's a lot of what you're doing just with the, the great thought leaders that you have inside of the organization coming up with some of these new ideas. We'll get into the competitions in a bit. Uh, talk a little bit broadly about innovation and EFAD's mission. So um, the first innovation strategy of EFAD was the, launched in 2007. And uh, so innovation is, is not new to IFA. This is something that the organization has been working on for a really long time, starting again with uh, with uh, putting in on, on paper what the vision was and how IFA wanted to support innovation from, from you know, for, from uh, 2007 when the strategy was, uh, was launched. But since then, um, many things have happened, and most recently in, in 2019, our independent office of evaluation issued the corporate level of evaluation on IFAD's support to innovation. The scope at the beginning was to look at innovation on operations, so our program of uh, loans and grants. But then it expanded to take a look also at corporate innovation. So for those people that don't, don't know the difference between the what sometimes we call programmatic innovation and corporate innovation, it's exactly what you were saying before, you know, how you support the ecosystems in the countries where we are operating and uh, our uh, our program of loans and grants. And that's, that's the external and support to entrepreneurship uh, and innovation externally, and then the entrepreneurship as you define. It, it was uh, quite an interesting exercise that was also accompanied by other reports uh, on IFAD's impact and or, or results in terms of impact through innovation. So the combination of these two reports was um, um, also part of the new uh, work plan of the of, of the newly established change delivery and innovation unit which was exactly established in 2019 so by 2020 the management of ifad decided to invest on addressing some of the recommendations in that in that corporate level evaluation the the definition that you were that you were referring to at the beginning of the question is a definition that took time to shape also internally, because uh, innovation sometimes can be a trend in some organizations, sometimes can be a buzzword in some organizations, but it, for IFAD it was really important that it was very, very clear to us what is that we want from innovation and um, how is that we envisioned uh, innovation for the organization, how innovation was going to be supporting our our objective to deliver impact and to improve the lives of rural people, but most importantly, what was going to be our approach to innovation. And one of the things after an 18 month uh, long internal consultation and also with inputs from uh, partners and external advisors, we came, um, we came up 
with an agreement on what the new definition of innovation was going to be. And it's important because if you uh, if you agree on, on the definition and you agree on your vision and your approach, then many of the decisions can go back to that initial vision. So it's, it's, really, it's really important to have a compass uh, in all aspects of an organization, but for us that are, or, uh, for uh, for us at IFAD, at IFAD being an international financial institution, making sure that those investments are guided by that compass, that vision is quite important. You would see that um, as part of our, our definition of innovation is very proper. It says specifically for IFAD, the most important innovations are those that deliver impact and solutions for poor rural people. So it's, uh, again, very laser focused, very clear about what the objectives are. But uh, we're also very conscious that everybody is interlinked in this uh, society and, and, and in this planet. So ensuring that rural development expands beyond uh, is also quite relevant to IFAD. However, innovation for the sake of innovation is not our objective. Our objective is innovation that will deliver impact to improve the lives of rural people. The other thing that is quite important is uh, in the vision is that innovation for IFAT is not only new technologies. Yeah. Is as you said before, it's also approaches, it's also methodologies, but we also see, and this is very unique to IFAT, we also see traditional knowledge, especially the knowledge of, uh, of uh, indigenous people as a source for innovation. And behavioral design is also quite important in how we approach innovation. Because for us to have a clear understanding of the context, the culture, and those decisions that can be determined also by cultural factors, it's, uh, it's, it's very important for us that we have a very clear understanding of what the problem is and to really fall in love with the problem rather than falling in love with the, with the solution or with a specific technology. So uh, ensuring that we are really addressing that problem, that we are designing with uh, and for the the end user or or the project participants, and that um, we are all working together to to find solutions that really can deliver results rather than being in love with a specific technology or, or with a specific approach. And then maybe in some cases, when when that's the case that you that you're pushing so much for a specific solution, you're not really uh, addressing the problem. So the, the that's that's part of the approach that we have here at IFAD. Um, very important this, in this um, approach that incorporates behavioral design is also ensuring that that traditional knowledge mm -hmm. is also incorporated in the agricultural extension services and in the advice that we provide. Because in traditional knowledge, you have solutions that are sustainable and mm -hmm. that are good for the planet in on, on many occasions. And uh, so also ensuring that that traditional knowledge is passed, you know, that we're contributing to pass the traditional knowledge from generation to generation is uh, quite important, quite relevant for us. Yeah, no, it's, that, that's very intriguing because, you know, la last year I uh, I profiled some uh, thought leaders from the, the Warani uh, tribe in Ecuador, and it, it was a, it was completely fascinating. You know how they had their uh, you talk about the indigenous knowledge. You know that's passed down from generation to generation about how you know if there's certain birds that aren't flying in a certain direction, we don't pick certain crops. It, it, it was it was totally yeah. I mean the the connection between sort of the old and the new is uh, we they have a lot to learn from one another. So I'm very intrigued to, in hearing you say that as well as as that being part of uh, EFOD thinking. Um, you know so but you know again co coming back to sort of the the more frontier stuff, which I know you're quite passionate about as well. Uh, and, and clearly there, there's this core. Uh, concept of, of digital agriculture at EFAD, uh, you've been very uh, you know, vocal in terms of technologies like blockchain, like artificial intelligence, like this principle of Web3 and sort of this new internet that uh, is controlled by its users as opposed to, you know, major corporate interest. Talk a little bit about how you look at, again, this basket of frontier technologies as you implement sort of this broader digital uh, agriculture concept. So again, as I was saying before, the approach is that is um, um, we are not in for the technologies per se, but only if the technologies are really addressing the problem and providing solutions to the to the uh, challenges that we are facing in the field. So uh, 
So as part of that, when we are looking for solutions, the first thing that we do is we do a call for problems to make sure that the solutions that we identify are really addressing problems that uh, we effectively have and that our project participants feel identified with. Then one interesting thing is the question of trust. Okay. Through many different through many different surveys that the organization has run in different aspects and, and different functions of the organization, that's and that's actually one of the or the main theme of the um, World Economic Forum was to rebuild back trust. And it, it's quite relevant because with the advance, especially last year of um of uh, artificial intelligence and generative AI. We, we became very conscious and we became very much, let's say not that word, but definitely users of AI. And everybody, everybody felt that, uh, you know, you, you, you were um, AI, AI verse and, and AI knowledgeable because it just became so accessible, so easily accessible to everybody. But with those opportunities, we also became aware of the challenges and of the perils of becoming too dependent on these technologies mm -hmm. or letting these technologies go without any sort of uh, monitoring, any sort of supervision to ensure that we're also protecting the data and the privacy of people, right? And also their identity. So that's that's an area where I see a big role for the international um, organizations to to play. One, in ensuring that these frontier technologies are accessible and can be used by our project participants so that they can benefit from the opportunities, but also to combine these technologies so that we are also protecting the privacy, the data, and the digital identity of our project participants. One one thing that I that I like to mention when we are having conversations about why is it important that we get involved in the design and the decision making tables about these technologies is the example of terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. When every time that you download an app, how many people actually read the terms and conditions, yeah. or how many people um, hit yes or I accept when you are buying a, a new insurance uh, product. Very, very few people actually read the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. But at least you are making a conscious choice that you're accepting the terms and conditions. But what if you are a small holder in a really remote area and uh, somebody is making that, that choice for you? But then you are excluded from financial services, from social services, from education or health because you uh, somebody else made that choice for you. That is extremely unfair. So I, I see the international organizations playing a big role, making sure that these innovations, these technologies are not only accessible, but that they are offered in a just equitable and inclusive way also to, to um, more vulnerable populations and uh, to people that have less access to education and to uh, social services. How do... Um... Talk, talk a little bit about the the EFAD innovation network and how the innovation challenges work. Because you know, again, this you define this as informal, democratic, non hierarchical spaces to share ideas and practices, uh, ultimately improve performance. And and uh, it's a very interesting model. Again, where you know you you bring in um, you know various sort of thought leading components uh, to you know. You know, ultimately choose uh, what you're focusing on here. Again, coming back to the fact you're not just innovating for innovation. Uh, talk a little about the challenges in the innovation network a little more, if you would. Thank you. So I would like to think of our knowledge sharing products and our capacity building uh, products as a, as a circle, as a 360 degree circle that encompasses also other initiatives that contribute to knowledge sharing, capacity building and skills development. So as part of that, of course, we have the IFAT Innovation Network, which is IFAT's largest community of practice. And uh, the main purpose of this platform is to exchange knowledge experiences, but also to um, to share opportunities, opportunities uh, about financing, opportunities about partnerships, and uh, opportunities about uh, just a, a, an open dialogue about the uh, the upcoming technologies or upcoming initiatives and get inputs 
from from the members of the network on on each of these initiatives. Together with that, we also have a, a an internal corporate initiative that are the IFAT Innovation Labs, and, and through these IFAT Innovation Labs, there you can think of them as workshops where we aim to develop capacity within IFAT and using the UN Innovation Toolkit also systematize how is that if people implement their uh, innovation initiatives. So, so how to support their innovation journey with uh, specific innovation tools and methodologies that go from uh, methodologies in uh, lean innovation to design thinking uh, to user centricity. So, so that, that then is complemented as well with uh, an external product that is very much linked to the IFAD Innovation Network, which is the IFAD uh, Innovation Talks, where you know we invite uh, world-known experts on innovation in different topics that range from gender, climate, nutrition, health, uh, finance, to share their experiences, to share good practices, and contribute their uh, their knowledge um, to the to the members of the IFAD Innovation Network and to the uh, more broader public. Um, so this is again. This is this is part of a fuller package, but we also have academic programs with uh, partner universities where we also offer certificate programs on food and sustainability and uh, sustainable agriculture, sustainable food and agriculture. So that's uh, that, that that's the in terms of the IFAT Innovation Network. Again, it's, it's uh, for knowledge sharing, capacity building and skills development. Uh, one last thing while we have you, Gladys, I know you just got back from the World Economic Forum in Davos, uh, the themes of security and job creation and AI and, and uh, climate and nature were on the calendar. Talk a little bit about uh, what you did there and what you talked about. Thank you so much, Ida. So um, at Davos, our contribution was to bring a new product that we we're developing with the Inter-American Development Bank is AgroWeb3. This is a uh, blockchain Web3 based uh, initiative and what it aims to do is to is to build a single interoperable protocol for digital wallets. To translate that, uh, basically what it does is that through the through this network that is powered by Lackchain, uh, which is the black flagship initiative of the Inter-American Development Bank, we aim to reduce transaction costs, intermediary costs, uh, bring down the these uh, these costs and transfer these savings to the project participants of IFAS projects, so that they can benefit from these technologies that are designed for them, but also in a way that become really accessible and and uh, encourage the use of of these technologies to protect their data again, to protect uh, uh, their digital identities. Um, so that's that's one of the things that was one of the things that I did at uh, Davos, uh, you know, sharing the the experience of AgroWeb3, encouraging people to join this uh, initiative with IFAT and the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, but also to contribute and do our own part in terms of what, I, what we were discussing at the beginning of this episode, which is to build back trust, to ensure that these technologies are being developed with um, an ethical um, you know, compass and to ensure that we are making these technologies accessible and easy to use for the for our project participants and for our target group. So that's uh, th those were the two main things. Now, in terms of the vision for the future, um, that also in th that also implies that as these technologies um, as these technologies develop, it's a great they create they create great opportunities for everybody. We mm -hmm. Our job is to ensure that those opportunities are accessible also to our project participants, but also that we help our project participants to adapt. IFAT, IFAT invests a huge portion of our portfolio on climate adaptation. So it's also recognizing that, uh, that there are aspects of our lives and there are aspects of our situation right now that go beyond um, the repairable. And we have to deal now with with adapting to the conditions that we have. Uh, so so adaptability is uh, was was one of the main the main takeaways from that was ensuring that we are providing the basis the the financing and the tools to help our project participants to adapt to and face all these challenges uh, 
I, I like the word used in the Economist's uh, article in December, per, pervaculation, which is, you know, this combination of the perma crisis with the, mm. with the volatility um, that we are facing uh, in 2024 and, you know, and beyond 2024. Mm. So being able to adapt and being able to see this, uh, you know, this, this face the uncertainties, face the volatility with with a mind that can adapt and, and with the resources so that uh, we can adapt not only us, but also, you know, mainly our project participants is uh, fundamental in the work that we do now and that we will be doing in the future. Wonderful. Everybody that is going to be watching this particular episode of our show across the various podcast networks or watching on our YouTube channel, again, you've been spending time with Gladys Morales, Senior Officer and Global Head of Innovation, International Fund for Agricultural Development, or EFED. Gladys, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come talk to us for a little while today. So thank you for everything you do. And as we like to say on our show, thank you so much for helping to create a better tomorrow for many people out there. Thank you, Ida. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Well done.